In the Midwest, the high power season is winding down. There's a chill in the morning air and leaves are starting to fall from the trees. So now would be a good time to review what I found out after competing this year with both iron sighted and scoped service rifles. I shot most of the year with the same A2 style AR-15 service rifle that I've used for the past 16 years. But in September, I had a new rifle built. This one complies with the new optical service rifle rules. I then shot in the last three matches of the year with it to try to learn some of the ins and outs of using a scope. I could count on one hand the number of times I have shot any competition with a scope, so this was a completely new world for me. In some respects, the results met my expectations. In others, I was just as frustrated as I was with the metallic sights. Since this is a different sighting system, it stands to reason that lining up the sights with a target is going to be different. Of all the stages, the most obvious difference is what I see in standing. Accepting the increased wobble is key, as is coming up with a revised decision-making point. What used to be an acceptable hold now looks downright scary. It also shows me that I have a lot of room to improve my wobble area. When you just glance through the scope, the crosshairs are pretty obvious. But when I was shooting, these just kind of disappeared, and all I was focused on was the dot. At 200 yards, it's very easy to see the scoring rings. So when shooting that close, I would try to just cover the X ring with the dot and then squeeze the trigger. At longer distances, I concentrated more on just centering the dot in the sighting block. When shooting rapid fire strings with the scope, the flow from shot to shot just seemed more natural. I felt like I was smoothly shooting one shot after the other without hesitation. With irons, the process just seemed like it was separated into discrete steps. Shoot a shot, reacquire sight alignment, and then shoot again. The scope made rapids feel like I was done with the string faster than normal. I wanted to see if this perception of shooting faster was real or maybe just an illusion. So I went back to my video footage of the rapid fire strings I shot this year. I then timed how long it took me to fire the string from the first shot to the tenth shot. In sitting, my average time to fire with metallic sights was 40.6 seconds. With the scope, 38.8 seconds. That's only 1.8 seconds faster. Not a huge difference, but still over 4% faster. But what about rapid prone? With irons, a string took an average of 48.3 seconds. Looking through the scope brought that time down to 44 seconds. That's 4.3 seconds and almost 9% faster. A significant difference. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that shooting faster rapids is necessarily better. The quicker pace during the string is merely an effect of not having to spend extra time between shots trying to get the front sight in focus. And avoiding that struggle to sharpen the top of the post is the real benefit. Back in August, I got together with some friends and we went to the range to play with different rifles and scopes. In that video, I spoke, in a dry and boring way, about how the adjustment to shooting high power with optical sights isn't just what you see. It's more about the process of getting to the firing line ready to shoot the shot. With that in mind, here are some roadblocks to that process that I've encountered while shooting a scoped service rifle. 
The first thing is evident as soon as you pick up the rifle. It's just too light. Since the UBR buttstock doesn't have a compartment as large as an A2, I can't just slide a full wedge of lead in there. There's a smaller opening that is full of lead, but this still isn't enough to weigh the rifle down like before. I would prefer a heavier rifle, especially one with a rearward bias for standing. I've never been able to successfully shoot a muzzle-heavy rifle in offhand. Since I hold this rifle in standing the same way as I do my A2, my fingers are in the same position over the ejection port. How does, how does anybody hold this thing with this thumb screw? Everybody got their six up. That way you don't have to do it the whole day. But the forward screw on the scope mount interfered with my finger, and over the course of 20 shots, I start to get some soreness in my hand because of it. So I replaced the thumb screw with a socket head screw. This improved it, but ideally I need to find a button head screw. This brings me to the biggest hurdle that I've tried to get past with the scope. Handling zeros. Specifically, the three aspects of zeros that a competitive high power shooter needs to have down pat. Tracking zeros, putting them on the gun, and having the confidence that they'll stay there. First, keeping track of zeros. Previously, I would just simply count the number of clicks from the bottommost position of the elevation wheel, or from the paint mark on my windage knob, and then write those numbers down in my data book. That will be my zero. Since the scope knobs are graduated in minutes of angle, should I still write down clicks, or do I write down some fraction? Do I track an integer or a mixed number? Clicks are a much more natural unit of measurement, and that's what I'm used to. With clicks, no conversions are necessary. With fractions of a minute, extra math is required. That might not seem like a big deal, but every time you have to do it, you open yourself to error. An error that might happen at your local match in April, or on Viali in July. Second, putting the zero on the gun. Once you read your zero from your data book, that adjustment has to go on the sights. There have been several instances where I started moving the elevation knob to put on the zero for the next stage, and then I had to stop to make sure I was going up rather than down. It usually takes me a second to remember that the knobs turn opposite of what I'm used to. Despite the lettering and directional arrows on the knobs, I still have to pause for a moment to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Third, having the confidence of knowing that the zero will stay on the rifle. The scope knobs have covers that screw on, but when the covers come off, the knobs are pretty tall and they seem very exposed. I typically put the zero on the rifle before the preparation period starts. Then I sling up and get into position. When I'm putting my arm into the sling, the rifle may rest against my body or brush against my arm. During this time, I'm always afraid of accidentally bumping the scope knobs and moving out of my zero. Having the weaker feeling detents contributes to this paranoia of unintentionally moving the knobs. In the matches I shot with the scope, I would check and recheck the knob settings just to make sure that the zero was set correctly. And now the high power season is over. My scope experience only lasted for three matches, but it was enough to get a taste. The scope was sent back to White Oak so other shooters could try it out, and I won't do much with the rifle until April. While the weather is cold, the only shooting I'll do will be with the non shoots 1413. Who knows? Maybe it'll even help me get used to turning the sights in the wrong direction. Then I'll be prepared for using a scope again. I'm documenting. I see. I'm documenting all this for the lawsuit.